Okay, so now for the unknown, the unknown that I used was steric acid. So I'm gonna put my name of my sample here, steric acid. Okay. And the mass of my sample was 1.0457. And like I said, you can just copy my numbers for now and replace it with your own data. 1.0457 grams for my unknown run. And my molar mass of my sample, what's my sample? Steric acid, it's C18H36O2. So my molar mass is 284.473. So you need to change that for whatever compound you have. What was it? 284.473. Okay, how do I get moles of sample if I know mass and molar mass? Mass over molar mass. Automatic by now, huh? Do not disturb. Okay, so this would be this should only have five sig figs, right? I've got five sig figs in my mass. All right, so that's my num number of moles. How much wire did I burn? I look at my mass, of, my mass of wire before and after here. So I have equals 0 0.20273 before. Minus 0 0.0237 after, I get 0 0.0036. Okay, so my mass of water burn is 0 0.0036. What's the known delta U for the combustion of the wire? We have that earlier. It's this one right here, right? Minus 58, 58. So I can just say that's equal to this number up here, okay? How do I calculate Q for my wire? Mass times joules per gram, right? So equal the mass of the wire times joules per gram. And adjust my sig figs there. Oh, divide by a thousand because it's in, we're, we're interested in kilogram. Thank you. Yeah. That's from my unknown run right here. I have before my wire was 0 0.0273 grams, after it was 0 0.0237. Amount of wire loss. Okay. So. You'll have to replace that with the actual numbers for your simulation. Yes. How did you do the delta U for the combustion of the wire? That's the known values. That's from before. We use the same wire before and after. So this 5858, that's a standard. That's the that's in the label for the wire. Okay, the fuse wire that we use. Yes. I'm sorry. To the picture. Yeah, this is not correct. It doesn't matter because you have to do it correctly on Excel anyway. Yeah. So what you get for, from Excel may not agree with these numbers. Okay. But I'm going to use these numbers just for illustration purposes. Okay. Because I don't want to have to be doing that graph and reading all those numbers again, at least. You know, I don't want to spend all the time in class doing that. I'm sorry. Or it should, and then you just change your data. Q wire is just mass 
the Delta Delta U for uh, per gram times the actual grams of wire that was burned. Okay, so that's Q for the wire. Again, that's just a small amount. What's the delta T from the graph? I'm gonna use my this delta T right here, T final minus T initial. I'm just gonna use that, okay? So you have to have use your own from your unknown. So this is gonna be equal to T final 28.061 minus my T initial 24.396. Okay, so I'm gonna have put 3.665 here. That Celsius also Kelvin, right? So this is from your data. And this is my data, assuming that graph was correct. Okay. You still with me? Okay, so what's the C from the standard run? Equals this number, right? That's just the calorimeter constant. I'm just copying that down here. Now, how do I get Q sample plus Q wire? Look at your handout. It says Q sample plus Q wire is minus C delta T. That's the amount of heat that has to leave your system for the temperature to go back to its original temperature to reverse your delta t so that's minus c delta t so it's just minus c delta t so the formula here would be equal to minus c times delta t which is this one and that's my q wire plus q sample that's in kilojoule right it's already in Q. My C is already in kilojoules. My Q, are, uh, my delta, and so kilojoules times Kelvin per Kelvin times Kelvin. That's already in kilojoules. Question? Why did you use uh, delta T? Delta T. That's from my unknown run. It's this temperature minus that temperature. Oh, so you just use the ones that are mentioned in the run. Yeah. And like I said, you can just use my numbers for now and fix it later with your with your actual data. Uh, you can't just use the, what, what you took with your screenshot because, in fact, the reason we, we're doing this in Excel is we want to do it right, right? Because you're kind of just eyeballing that with the, when, when we did the screenshot. Yeah. How are the calorimeter constants calculated? Calorimeter constant, that's what you calculated in the standard run. This one right here, when you did your standard run, the purpose of the standard run is to determine this calorimeter constant. It's that number. So you use that same number in the unknown run. Okay, it's just that number equals whatever was calculated in the in the standard run. Oh, uh, in the for the standard? This one? It's just uh look, your formula right here. In your standard run, look, over here, in your standard run, you have Q sample plus Q wire, you have that, and you divide that by the negative of the delta T, that will give you your C, okay? So over here, you have Q sample plus Q wire together, and take the negative of it, divide by delta T, which is this one. Got it? So that's Q sample pl sample plus Q wire. How much of that is from the sample? How would I do this? I got the value for Q sample plus Q wire. How do I get Q sample? Just subtract the Q wire, right? So, so Q sample is Q total minus Q wire. So this is going to be equal to Q total minus Q wire. Oops. Equals Q total minus Q wire. Why is this thing looking like this? There you go. So it's almost the same. 
It's a small correction because of the Y. Yes? I'm sorry? There is a negative. It's minus C delta T. Okay, silence, yes. C delta T. And you got 11.3 over here. Okay, it might be some rounding issue. Are those the right numbers? Okay, I think the problem might be here. Ah, not that one, sorry. This one right here. This is 6318 times 4.184. You have the same thing? And this one? Okay, this 5858. This 5857.6. And this is 2.11. So you're not getting this number? We'll check that later. Okay. All right. Okay, so what's the delta U combustion per sap per mole of sample? This is Q for the sample. So what is it per mole of sample? Divided by the number of moles. So this is equal to the Q per sample of the actual sample divided by the number of moles of sample. And that's Q kilojoules per mole. Okay. So that's how you get delta U of combustion. Stop recording.